I mean, everybody loves to fish, but nobody wants to walk off here. And one thing you got to do, you got to, to be fortified. And you begin to start filling. You got to be fortified to a point in time that you got to be willing to know that. Like the Bible says, is that if you have faith, God will move them out for you. And right now, God gives you move them out. So uh, again, please give them a big hand. I'm going to talk about carbogam. Carbogam is the word that I learned that basically means seize the day. Get these rose buds right in the day. These same rose buds tomorrow today, tomorrow we die. Also, I'm going to talk about being, having the will to be successful, conquering the giant. If you're a big champion, you're going to be uncomfortable for a small, for a small amount of time. But if you endure to the end, when I played football at the University of Michigan my senior year, I knew I was going to be rich. There was no doubt about it in my mind that I was not going to be rich because I felt that if a man was in front of me trying to stop me, just a single man, and he was going to have some problems. I was shot by big agents and different things of that nature. So when I ended up the last play in practice, I see him here after get chosen captain of my peers, which is the most honorable award that you can get at the University of Michigan if your peers are back with the captain. Now at that point in time, we had a running back in our own week. It was an All-American. We ended up going first round, top 10 pick, or top 24 pick at that time. The best player did not get the award from his peers. I uh, mean, selected the captain. The guy that worked the hardest, the one that motivated the people, the one that worked as a team, the one that not, would not quit, the one that was fortified, that, that, that worked hard for a single purpose, that showed his team unconventional, unconventional, unmatched up. And then what happened? He did hurt, he closed me out. Everything at that point in time, it was like dying. It was like death for me. It was like death. I had to look my mother in the face and tell her I came by that house for you. I came by that house, man. Four years, I set myself up to buy a house for you. Because every young man out of the city of Detroit wanted to do for their wife. I couldn't buy it. But the one thing that I did, I understood what I did. I understood that just because my back is the wall. Just because I can't play football did not mean I could not lead this team. So I work hard. I work hard every day. I cried every day. But what it did for me, it made me a stronger leader in life today. And that's called a crucible. A defining moment in one's life. Something that it's uncomfortable for you. It has to be uncomfortable. It has to be unbearing. Something that you hate, that you don't want to deal with. Something, if you can't pay your mortgage, you lose your house. If you have a kind of problem, you have to pay the choice. That right there, people, embrace it. Don't run from it. Embrace it. Too many people in life always want things easy to them. They don't want to work hard, but they want to be a part of, they want to be a part of championship. I'm gonna talk, and I like talking about my team, but when we lost the championship, we had some unruly coaches on our squad, and then I told them that I would never ever coach with the, with the Tigers again based on how they did the Steelers. Because I am a Steelers. And in life, when you play them, that's the way you build your kids. Now, I was hurt. Oh, I was hurt. But I looked at them in the face. And looking at Mercy in the face, that's the way you're a true champion. That's the way you were true champ. 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 Also, I want to talk about. I want to talk about when I had the opportunity to play football. You and me. I went to Coach Moore. It was my coach at that point in time. Before Lord Crawford the head coach. And I said, Coach, I said, once I have my surgery, my rehab every day. Eight hours a day, can I please play in one play? And 
And my coach said, we'll see, Marshall. We'll see. And at every day, before the game, I could hear the Michigan Fight song. I was just sitting at the hall, riding that bike. Riding that bike with the band playing. I was crying, and we had fans taking pictures of me. But as, I was getting, as they were taking pictures of me, more tears dropped. Because I understood that to be successful in life is not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. And the devil always tries to put things that bears in our way to try to stop us. So, we played against Minnesota the last game. And as we was playing, it was eight minutes left on the clock. And this is my last game that I ever complained in my entire life in the University of Michigan. And I look at the clock. And the only thing that I look at the clock began to lose time. The only thing I could hear was Carpe D. Carpe D. That is the Rose Bus YD Man. Old time is fine. This ain't Rose Bus to smile today, tomorrow we got it. And as three minutes approached, I ran out of the field. I lift, lift, and lift, and ran out of the field. My coach said, Walter, get back here. And I took the line. And I looked at him with tears in my eyes and said, Jesus, I said, please, coach, let me play one play. And he just said, no, Walter, get off the field. As I got off the field, I felt like I was dying. And the only thing I could hear was, Walter, Walter. Walter. And it's such an amazing thing that happened that day because when I looked around and heard 105,000 call my name, I said, man, they know me. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And my coach said, Walter, come here. He said, son, he said, I'm going to lie to you out here and catch this pass. He said, but don't catch the pass, let it go in your head. And it was three minutes after the game. The one thing I kept hearing here is carpe diem, carpe diem, carpe diem. But the one thing you gotta understand, people, is that through the course of a four-month period of time, I couldn't play for the University of Michigan. My NFL hopes and dreams were crashed. The house that I wanted to buy my mother was crashed. But one thing it did, it brought me closer to God. I want to tell them. You have so, so much success that I did as a young boy from age eight years old to go to the University of Michigan. You tend to think it's you. You tend to think that God had no place because you didn't care to. You live in the, the best of life. You're attaining some type of fame that you think is fame. And you tend to start analyzing football. And that's one thing you thought that I don't want you guys to do. Is that football to find who you are? That's why I will not let me and I know over there play a football play on me in the University of Michigan or professional ranks. Because I did not want to come out here today to talk to you as a football player. I want to come today to talk to you as a man going to me, a young boy that can grow to mature to be me. And I was on the field. My folks say, jump out there, watch. Jump out there, watch. Draw out there, walk. You got to understand these crutches. For so many people in life, these crutches become a part of life. They become a part of life. People, if you walk out of here today, throw the crutches down. Don't allow yourself to need these crutches. Don't let them be a way of life. Let them be a way of healing. A way of healing, not a way of life. If my folks say, draw out there, walk, I start drawing, and I start walking. And there ain't nothing in the world that my coach can do at that point in time without busting my butt for four months, for four months, to play for one play. At that point in time, it had nothing to do with the season. It had nothing to do with millions of dollars. It had nothing to do with anything that I thought at first. Because God took my foot. Because without God, I never would have ever had a chance to play that one play. And I played. And it taught me in life is that I will never allow myself, never allow myself to use a crutch 